Field Selectman's meeting of Tuesday, September 11, 2018. Would you all like to now rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have some approval of some warrants. I would like to, uh, to entertain a motion to approve the expense warrant for 9418 for $109,743.93. Okay, together? Okay, yeah, we'll do them all together. Approve the expense warrant for refunds for 91418 for $1,000, 228 and 53 cents. Approving expense warrant for 9518 for $12,943.74. Approving expense warrant for 911 18 for $41,069.58. And approve a payroll warrant for 912 18 for $171,834.38. You got that motion? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Then I would like to have uh, uh, entertain a motion to accept the 619 18 of the 18 of the executive uh, for exec excuse me yes. the executive sessions uh, meetings that we've had. You have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then we have uh, to approve minutes and reports from other departments. ZBA minutes for June 7th, 12th, and July 7th, and the 31st. And Recreation Committee meeting minutes from August 2nd, 2018. Can I have a motion? Yeah, that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Announcements. Tyler Wolin, District A for Senator Ann Govey, will be holding office hours at the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, September 19th. All are welcome. Does anyone else have any announcements to make? Um, no, though you probably saw it in correspondence um, that uh, the uh, 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 Central Mass Municipal uh, Transportation Authority meeting that the West Brookfield uh, selectman, Rich uh, Bagna, Bag Bag um, got voted as the uh, Western Region Subregion representative, and then uh, Ms. Uh, Brink from Hardwood is the alternate. Um, so, if we have any concerns about what's currently kind of funded through TIPS, mm -hmm. then they've provided contact information. Um, and we should definitely try to keep ourselves on the radar. Like, it, it was good that uh, I know that we received a correspondence from Don Taft about the Quaybog. Mm -hmm. uh, bridge project between us and East Brookfield. And one of the things that came out in discussion during that meeting is that small towns and small town projects tend to get handed off to contractors to kind of be the leads on. Mm -hmm. And because they're not big dollar projects for companies that size, they tend not to get a lot of attention to stay mm -hmm. on track and on time and on, uh, on everything, yeah. basically. Um, so their recommendation was to do kind of exactly what we're doing, which is get in contact with the contractor, get in contact with any of the neighboring communities that also have to like facilitate the project happening and to make certain that we don't give them any excuses to push the project. Um, so Karen was kind enough to reach out to East Brookfield for us and they are planning on having a fall meeting though they don't know when yet. Um, and their um, annual meeting is in May. So. Um, one, when we get to the warrant articles, one of the things that we, we don't have a formal submission yet, but we'd like to, I think we'd be well advised to put a placeholder um, on there. And It is. And, it's already in there. Right. And, and by the way, when I did talk to uh, Donna Winslow, I ran that by her and she said she would talk to Selectman about it. Great, that's fabulous. And, and just see if they can get it on the hall, because then it's out of the way for everybody, right, right. Mm -hmm. and they don't have an excuse to push it until like the end of summer or even next yeah. year. That's a good idea. So. Yeah, see okay, <coughs> the first on our agenda is um, is uh, Mr. Cook with uh, Bylaw Article Discussion. Mr. Cook, would you like to come up here? Please? Yeah. 
Let me run through the list, if you may, and I'll take questions. And... Okay. The first one is the one I actually discussed at the annual town meeting. It's basically, it's a paraphrase of an existing law. It deals with recall of town officers. Um, when I was looking over the bylaws, I noticed there wasn't a recall provision. And Mr. Siri, who's the town clerk, pointed out to me that uh, in 1984, yes. at the because of the town of Brookfield, the legislature passed a special act. So I think it's, a, or the bylaw committee thought it's important to basically have something in the bylaws which basically paraphrases this. Okay, now, did you change anything or is it pretty I mean, it's a, it's a paraphrase of what the legal, which is why the town council said to me afterwards, she would like to make a couple of wording changes in this. Okay. So I would ask the selectmen, you know, give this to council. Whatever changes she wants to make is fine. Because um, the intent was that there's something, you know, because 20 years from now, if someone wants to recall an official, right? We How would they know there would be we, a... We have gone through a recall petition. I know, but... <clears throat> That was a while back, but how many people in the next generation are going to okay, know? I understand what you're saying, Jim. So that's why I think it's important we adopt this. So if you would just further this to town council, whatever council comes back for changes, we'll support. Mike agrees. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it was after the legislation. No, but I'm just saying, he, he says we need it. Yeah, he said, Mike says that we need this also. Okay. 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 I don't have any problem with that. Uh, in favor of putting that on to the uh, right. one? Uh, sure. Um, any second? Oh, yeah, sure. Then, uh, Do you have any discussion with it? Yeah. No, no. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I just number them just for the sake of pencil and number them? Yeah, maybe one of you. This is the first The next one is it to see if the town will vote to add a new bylaw, which it, if adopted would become Chapter 2, Section 22 of the town bylaw and read as follows. Prior to setting the tax rate each year, the town of Brookfield must hold a town meeting for the citizens to consider an article on the amount of free cash to be used to refute, reduce the tax rate. Okay. Um, again, the bylaw, let me go back. It used to be past practice in this town at the fall meeting to, the last motion was to, what would we be done with free cash? And usually it was split between stabilization and reduction of the tax rate. We've departed from that practice in the past few years. So basically, what all this article was, it would basically puts it on the fall warrant um, for all practical purposes. And you could recommend zero, but at least it, it opens up a discussion of what to do with free cash. So. I don't ever remember taking the free cash and putting it to reduce the tax rate. I do. You do? Yep. Oh. Every time you pay something out of stabilization, you're applying money to, yeah. to lower the tax rate. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know a lot of times the assessors have talked that, you know, it doesn't, you know, we had, it wasn't, didn't we have something that came from Al about how much it would for this year, how much money you would put, and it actually wouldn't reduce it that much, but then next year you would have to appropriate the money to put that. You know, yeah, so Alice yeah. would be opposed to this. Yeah. And the CIPC is opposed. Mm -hmm. That was uh, where the uh, advisory board stands. Yeah. I, Do you know where the advisory board stands? Um, I again, I was going to go meet with the advisory board after we determine which ones are going to be on the warrant to make sure they're all going to be there. So then I'll talk to them about the reasons for this. But I, I, again, I, I hate the term free cash because it's not really free. It's no free cash. It's really okay. taxpayers' money that's in excess of what was budgeted. So I, they really should have a say. We spend, we debate fifty dollars on the expenditure, right? Absolutely. So we should really have a debate on what to do with free cash. <laughs> As I said, it, you could, or whoever says well, so. Well, I think, and I think this is part of a larger issue, though, as well, because, I mean, financially and structurally, free cash is 
part of what we, and we haven't historically done a great job of setting financial policy or, or setting long-term plans, but to your point, free cash also shouldn't be zero. I mean, the, the intent is to budget within our means and then it, and, and that allows for conservative budgeting, right? So that we're not putting ourselves at risk during economic downturns that we won't be able to address core functions, right? Uh, but then free cash facilitates, especially if we can stabilize how we plan for the amounts of free cash to come back to the town, which is possible. I mean, not perfect, but you can, you can, to a certain extent, uh, and, and a number of communities do, plan to, to hit certain thresholds of having free cash come back so that you can then reapply at the capital spending without <coughs> going anywhere near your, your levy limit. And, and through, you know, responsible long-term fiscal planning that puts you in a position where you stabilize the tax rate and potentially lower the tax rate by design as part of that larger plan. So the one concern I have with this is the, is the risk of kind of breaking that cycle. If somebody says, you know what, I'm going to put together a posse and go to town meeting, we're going to put every dime of it against the tax rate this year. You're just setting yourselves up for some other year with, um, uh, with potential negative impacts. And, and I, I think it's, un I think we've finally gotten to a point where we, where we have a, we've, we've reestablished our stabilization appropriately. And we're in a good position overall to, to where maybe we can do some of those things, but I don't think we should be mandating that it has to be on every fall meeting. Well, again, philosophically, we debate every appropriation. And, the, and what used to happen was the, the town meeting set the tax rate. And I think it'd be more appropriate to keep this on so we can have a discussion. Again, so what you decide to spend should not be set up by an elite bunch. It should be determined by the taxpayers themselves. And I don't debate that. Here's where I have a concern with it. There are years when we have no other reason to have a fall special, right? And, and generally, at least in the last six or seven years, we really haven't had free cash to spend in the fall. We may this year. I would rather see a general bylaw that states that we include this article on every... Um, on every special town meeting warrant, not state that it has to occur prior to the setting of the tax rate that year. So if there's a year that we have, don't have a fall meeting, okay, when we don't have a fall meeting, we probably won't have gotten our free cash back that fall. And there'd be no reason to have the meeting other than because we now have tied our hands and we have this bylaw that says that we have to do it before we set the tax rate. So I would rather see you come back to us where instead of linking it to the setting of the tax rate, that you just have a bylaw that we always include that article on any special town meeting warrant because that would cover both the fall your pen? and the summer. Can I borrow a pen? Okay. Yeah. Is that, I mean, do you understand what I'm saying though? I don't want to link it to the setting of the tax rate. I, I don't have a problem of adding it to the list of things that we want for the town meeting. At the same time, where I'm headed with this is that we have uh, uh, capital improvement and we have uh, advisory inputs that are needed. And uh, until such time as we have those inputs, I don't think that we should move this thing forward. Yeah. I, I know capital I improvement feel, was I not in favor same. of it. I feel the same way so, you do. So I'd, I'd well. make a motion to add this to the, to, to the, the uh, I'm sorry, temporary warrant or what, whatever the listing is, add it to the listing, but I think look to Jim to have inputs from advisory and C CIPC, and uh, and then we'll see where we want to go. And your, your input as as well as far as the adding it to all rather than just yeah, the just, one. I, I would I don't I don't mind seeing it as a that every special town meeting warrant would include an article to this effect because then it doesn't force us to have a town meeting prior to setting the tax rate. But but normally though we we do have this a lot of times at the end of the annual also. Right. Yeah. I don't really approve of putting, I mean, I don't go along with it. Well, and again, my motion would be that we leave it on a temporary list mm -hmm. and we get inputs from the other committees that aren't here. And if we get, we come to consensus, great. If we don't come to consensus, then we'll have the debate on the town hall floor. Makes sense. All right. Well, okay. we'll put this as number two. Two, but 
with a T at the end of it. Yeah. Can I cast that down to, with the verbiage change? Or do you um, wanna, well, I I'll copy it. I'll copy your verbiage change on my You copy can't, I, if you could read my handwriting, you're, you're, luck, you're lucky. Okay. <laughs> Now the next I have to translate one that bit. Here is um, to see if the town will work to amend Chapter 10, Section 16 of the town's bylaw and make the following wording changes noted in bold that the, such that the revised bylaw would read as follows. Don't we have, we, we do have this already, the curb cut, and don't we have something It's from the state also? Yep. Yep. So basically we already have all this in place. Well, let me explain why this came about. Okay. Um, the bylaw that exists is without the bold, okay? And there are two problems with the bylaw. One is there is no posted price. So if, I mean, if you go into any restaurant, they'll tell you what the price is for the menu. Mm -hmm. um, there is no prior to this bylaw, there is no price. What would it cost me for a bond if I put it in the driveway? The other concern that's been raised to me from people is that um, suppose you put in a driveway and, and the highway superintendent signs off on it. Well, you have to wait a pretty long time to get your money back. You know, I had a dispute with a vendor the other day and I had my money refunded in 10 minutes. Um, so, I mean, those are the two key points. Um, this came about after discussion with Mr. Chafee. I, if you see, there's still a variable in here. I really was, to be honest with you, this is a compromise. I would rather say a set fee with a set amount or a percentage amount, but Mr. Chafee argued that there's a lot of variables uh, involved as to what the bond amount should be. So we set some parameters around it. I mean, again, I, I remain skeptical that we couldn't set a standard fee, but this is what the compromise came to. So this includes the latest? Um, I saw your version and there are other things. Your version that I saw is, is actually what I would consider to be administrative regulation. There's far more details in that yeah, than there is in this. Right. There are yeah. far more details, which there should be if you adopt administrative regulation on top of a law. The key points again are that you need a permit. There's a cost for the permit. It puts down what the fee schedule is, parameters, and it says that once it's signed off on, you get your money back in 90 days. And that's basically the only changes to what is the existing. And you and Mr. Chafee are all in agreement? I left the meeting believing that Mr. Chafee was in accord. Okay. Can I have a motion that we add this to the number two? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This one will be number three. Um, and I, I probably should have said this during the discussion on that. I do want to get confirmation from the highway that the takeaway from that meeting was the same. Okay, we can. And I mean, kind of reserve the right to revisit it. Okay. Okay, now this is another. Okay, so where are we now? This is another one. This is the town of Vote to add a new bylaw to the town bylaws, which would become section 20 of chapter two if adopted and reads as follows. Any new fee for town services must be approved by a majority vote at a town meeting before the fee can go into effect. That's already like said in um, mass general laws also. Any fee that you have, any kind of fees have to be um, set at a town meeting. Right. I think in our block votes, that's one of the things that winds up getting um, granted to us to. No, when we had gone up, I remember a few years ago, uh, even I had gone up on, on, on fees, on fees about the town clerk fees when I was supposed to take over, and that had to come up at a vote at town meeting and need approval. And then also, when the tax collector years ago wanted to go up on the fees when she sent out um, late notices, that was also approved at town meeting. So any fee has to be approved at a town meeting. We have a comment. Would you order? 
Yes. As chair of the planning board, this bylaw is not run by, to my knowledge, any fee charging entities in town for their input. I know the planning board was not consulted. We have significant expenses associated with every special permit. Those expenses are deducted from the fees we set. And in my personal estimation, the fees are underrepresentative of the charges that we charge already, that we get charged already from people like the town engineering uh, consultant. So I would, um, I have not consulted the planning board about this to get their sense. Mm -hmm. Speaking personally as the chair, I would at least like to see this run by all of the fee granting entities for their input. And Linda, I believe that I haven't consulted the block because we haven't been notified about this. I haven't consulted the block um, bylaws, but to my knowledge, if we want to increase our fees, we increase our fees. I've yeah. never been told that we have to consult the town meeting. Yeah. Well, well, we, before we have. So well, let's, let's put this on the list with the T <laughs> so and have the, the fee setting agencies, committees, feedback I, to Mr. Cook as to their inputs. I know, I had to get permission and the tax company. Uh, and I'm not saying you didn't, yeah. I'm just saying that Sharon brings up a, a very yeah. good point when it comes to, especially well, the planning board. If it, Linda, if you're correct on state law, I would ask town council, because you should probably note, again, yeah. the MGL chapter at the end of this. Oh, yeah. yeah, because this, um, so ask them if you, we used to do that on the school committee. We would just say MGL, as per MGL, whatever the statute is. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. I wasn't just ignoring your Oh, actually okay. The I would just add that because, again, there are many of the town bylaws, if you read them, are regurgitations or paraphrases of state law. And I don't see anything wrong with that because people don't know state law, right? And they would look at the town meeting. And again, I don't think the bylaws should be a complete listing of what the state law is. You should reference it. So if there may be other provisions in that that I don't know of. I'm not a lawyer. But anybody can read that in plain English. But again, I think Sharon brings up a, a, an excellent point, especially with development and developers and the like. And we really need to make sure we're covering that point. Because I, I don't think we have just this way. Need to react. So we'll put that on also with a temporary yes. Okay. The next one is to see if the town will vote to add a new bylaw setting a regular date for the annual town meeting and which is adopted would become chapter 21, section 2 of the bylaws and read the annual town meeting will be held on the second Wednesday in June of each year. If I remember back at the annual, Mr. Holcraft had put a, had put a box out and let people put their input in a box and then we count, I know they were counted after and people wanted stuck, stuck with Fridays. Yeah. Now, hmm. granted, they self-select because the people that showed up on Fridays probably that's prefer Fridays. That, that's right. No. Okay. But did say Friday. Uh, it's not like you do the survey of town. Let me, let me raise an overall issue. When I first moved into this town 30 years ago, and we held town meetings upstairs, it was packed, and the average age was 40, okay? And they said, we're gonna have to, we're getting so crowded, we're gonna you know, invoke the fire marshal. We have to build a new elementary school and hold our meetings there. Since we've moved over there, the average age has risen to 60 for those in attendance, oh. and, and it's nowhere near the amount of people who should show up. Now, there's a host of factors, I think, and this only addresses one of them. So this is not a magic bullet by any means. But I think if you want to attract more people, you're going to have to do a couple of things. You're going to have to move it to a day that's not a Friday or Saturday. I mean, there was some debate within the committee whether we pick Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or, or, or Monday. But we settled on a Wednesday. Um, the other thing I think you have to do is you have to, which we used to have was that the town meeting used to be held after the annual election. You have to set a date so people know in advance right so they can plan things oh i know the annual town meeting will always be whatever it is the second wednesday of june and by the way why you picked the second week of june was this tantasco always holds their graduation the first week of june so you wanted to avoid that hurdle and you wanted to have the town meeting before everybody school lets out which is usually around the third week of june 
right, and there's activities then. So we picked, so the reasoning behind this was to pick a day when people would not take off with their kids on vacation, right, but would miss the two end of year activities at the elementary and end of year at the high school. So that's the reasoning behind this. For as long as I remember, annual town meeting for on Fridays. And we always did have, when we did have them upstairs, it was always a pack time. But and I think have times have changed, Linda, with Wednesday working couples Wednesday. and people driving long distances. But why do you say Wednesday would be yeah, better? Wednesday. I commute an hour every day to well, my job. Doing it, the last thing I personally want to do, okay, if you want to, and I'm the, I hate to put it this way, I may be the only person at this table who's a 40-something, okay? The last thing I want to do, okay, is to rush back here on a Wednesday night go to a three-hour town meeting and have to get back on the road at seven o'clock in the morning to get into my job the next day. But I would think most people get Friday off and they want to go off and celebrate. As you a know what? This is where I'm just old enough. I get home and I am happy to be there. At least on a Friday night, I know that if I go to a town meeting, I can sleep in as long as the dogs will let me on Saturday. Well... Again, I would ask the ghost, because we can always shoot this down. I think what really needs to be done is put a survey in the Brookfield Citizen and ask people what they want to do. I, we can, we can, that, 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 I think, okay. is what really needs okay. to be done. Because okay. that, that would determine okay with what the majority were. Then you could bring this back, and if it was, I don't know. We can probably, the next, once the next citizens come out. I mean, if you want, I'll hold this. If you want to do a survey, I will say we'll withdraw this and bring this back for the annual. I still think it should be, the, uh, again, my reasoning on the second week of June, I think, unless you want to move to the last week. No, no second week works. So just the day. Yeah. Okay. okay. I will we'll hold this pending the results of the survey. I'd even be, I'd even be, I'd even be willing to, to get the bylaw to change it to, that it be held in the second week of June, not specify a day. And because I, I think it is the way it's currently phrased, I don't see us doing a town meeting with as late as the state gets their numbers out every year. We're still even holding our town meeting before we finalize yeah. what our state aid is going to be. Yeah. I, I don't have any objection to at least moving the town meeting out of May, where we're always doing an oh, exception yeah, to the bylaw. We've been moving out of May for quite 10 years. Is, yeah. is to go ahead and put it in the second week of June because that would at least make it predictable to your point, right? Right. And then also we can always yeah. rank where we the way I feel also, say if free cash doesn't get certified right. and we don't have free cash, then we should, I mean, I think we should wait. We, we, this year we had, what was the third week? Fourth. It was so, fourth. Yeah, so what we did is, yeah. But it's a practical matter, Linda, anyway, you're going to have to have two, two annual town meetings. There's so much on the warrant. Oh, sure. the, per, the first meeting is going to be going through the stand, like the school budget and the fire budget. And then... <laughs> you're probably going to have to bring it back to the final week of June because you're right. We started this whole process when the state wasn't doing their job and getting a state aid on time. Well, I but, like the idea of what we did do because of the issues that we had with finances and whatnot and getting set up. We did it. We did paperwork basically for the first night and then we did finances the second night and it actually seemed to work. Yeah. So to kind of think about that practice is not right. a bad idea either. I, I thought that was a good idea what we did this year. It worked. Yeah, it worked much better than having everything on in one night. Well, just so I think I will hold this, let the results of the survey, talk to the committee. If it comes back Friday, we'll, I mean, we'll, we'll set it this Friday in the second week of June. But we'll hold it, wait the results of the survey. And, uh, Are you going to check with Linda? I will check with Linda or Karen as to when the results come in. Which, if you do it, oh, so, uh, so I'm going to wait for the survey results. So who's doing the contacting Linda Purse? Doesn't matter. You want to contact Linda Purse or I can. She's not here right now. But yeah, yeah she, I don't think there's going to be an October edition or issue, is there? Yeah, she was getting done. Oh, yeah, she, if that's done. So it'll be October 15th would be the earliest to get the survey. Yeah, in. Do, you want, I mean, it's up to yes. do you want to just outright ask the question, or do you want to give them certain days to choose from? It's, it's going to cost it. probably. It's, it's going to email. cost probably. Just so that everybody's aware, it's going to yeah. cost what probably about. And especially, it depends on how we do it. We can do a sheet of paper with a rip-off survey that people can either drop back off at the 
town hall or, or mail back in, or if we did it as a postcard insert, but then, you know, the postage and all that. So are we doing something? Okay. It costs a couple hundred bucks either way yeah. to do 1,800 copies. And I suppose they can't do a survey monkey for them, can they? Yeah, they could, but didn't they? Yeah, well, we could. Yeah, it's a great idea. Right, we could. I mean, the the thing that I was see if you did a survey monkey for them, they could just run an, an see, announcement. Then there's really no money. I'm right, but then the, thinking as a fiscal conservative, I am. right, but a lot of people complain when we don't make stuff accessible and you can only do it all online. I, well, so you raise a good point. So they're so. But I think ask would you ask Linda and, and just have a tear off on one of her pages. That you check and you can oh, tear, off tear off one of our pages. Yeah, tear off one of our pages. Yeah. But to, to Jim's point, have the Survey Monkey uh, location yeah. there it, so that we have two sets of data. Two sets of data, right. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good idea. And then I'll check back. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll send you something. I'm, Karen, I'll just email you something. That'd be real easy. This, okay. Yeah, when is away anyway? So, so when she comes back. And. We'll run it by and see we'll go said. forward with that based on those results. Yeah, I can set up the survey monkey if you want. Okay, if you're familiar with it. Yeah, I'm very familiar with it. I used to do it all the time, but I don't have a with company account, so I don't want to help. Okay, so we're all set. We're all set. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you Jim, for coming in. We'll see you later. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. We're here. Good night. Our next one is for Bernard Engineering. Um, it's, it's an invoice, and um, the total of the invoice is $3,190, and I would like approval for the board to sign it. Motion to sign. Uh, I'll second, but for discussion, what, what exactly is the work that that's um, for? What is it's road work. Right there in the front when it says. Oh. Okay, this is a town of Brookfield from the CM. RPC is for high Hayden. Oh, it's for Hayden. Hayden. Okay, so it's part of the CBDG work. Yes, that's what it is. Okay, awesome. Okay. Is um, who uh, it's an award the architect con contract for this senior center project. It, um, following the recommendation of the project review committee, composed of members of the CBG advisory board and selected members of town hall improvement committee, some of whom have uh, had roles. Uh, including on the Council on Aging and Massachusetts Certified Public Purchasing Official. I recommend the award of the project to the firm of Clark and Green Incorporated of Great Barrington, Mass, which has been identified as the top ranked finalist for the Brookfield Senior Center of Architectural Design, RFQ, under Mass General Law, Chapter 7. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I should have said, is there any discussion on that? No, they, no, they did a thorough yeah, job of appropriately mm -hmm. running the RFP process. It's good to see that moving along. Mm -hmm. Next one, we have uh, wage authorization. So, I can read them all off and we can, uh, okay, we can vote them in. Okay. Uh, this is for Kathy LaRocca, grant writer facilitator, hourly rate of $24.50. And after that, uh, it would be after 20, 90 days, uh, she would get $25. Okay. Uh, the next one is for um, Herb Foley, cemetery caretaker. And uh, proposed rate would be fifteen dollars an hour. Now, some of those, by the way, are leftovers. Uh, 
for the uh, cola raises that people didn't submit, so some of those. Oh, are, oh yeah. Okay. The next one is for Robert Wall. He's the plumbing and gas inspector. Um, monthly he gets uh, $347.67, and that's with the 2.5 coal added on. And then the same uh, Jeffrey Taylor, uh, building inspector. Monthly he it's $1,404.08, and that's also with the coal in it. And this the Sarah Purdue, that's how you said her last name. She's the animal control. She gets five hundred and six dollars and thirty-three cents, and that's also with the cola. And then it's Scott Mansfield, a wire inspector. He gets three forty-five seventeen a month, and that's with the cola also. The next one is for Gary Lapine. And monthly he gets uh, $395.92, and that's also with the coal. And the tax collector, uh, her present salary is um, $43,776 plus her $1,000 certification bonus. Okay, and this is now for. Um, Brenda Medeville, who's a library director, and she, that, oh, that's from her. And this is for uh, the employee, Michelle Taylor, who's the library assistant substitute. And uh, it's a proposed hour with the Kohler of $14.26. And this is another one for Arthur Putman. He's the custodian. And it's a Kohler, and it's uh, $13.47. And this one is for Kate Simpson, who's a senior library assistant, hourly salary is $14.93. And for Julia Taylor, who's also a library assistant, and it's $14.38. And this one is for Carrie Van Holt, for $13.33. She's a library assistant. And then Holly Simpson, a library assistant, is $13.07. And this is uh, for Brenda Medeville, and uh, it's for $24.71. I would like to a motion to accept all of these. Uh, the motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
doesn't have any place for us to sign. Let's just sign it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Our next one on the agenda is to adopt a driveway permit regulations. Motion to approve. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? Just the biggest thing that's in there yeah. is the, the individuals that are going to take those permits out are going to sign that they've approved yeah. and accept that document. I know. I, I read through it and I accept it. I think We're it's not going to have any more mistakes. No more mistakes. Do you read that? Do you read that? Um, you want me to read it in its entirety? You want it read in the entirety? Well, how big is it? Just so the people know and so, yeah, you know, it's a big change. Is it, uh, how lengthy is it? It's four well, pages. Tell us the main parts of it anyway. I can scan it. You scan yeah. it and, and I'll hit the high points. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So basically, the first per portion of it is to get some the mm -hmm. definitions. What's a street? What's the purpose? The purpose is basically to clarify um, our driveway permit regulation and to ensure that when they're constructed that they don't adversely affect traffic and the public roadway. Uh, it, it states that a permit to make a driveway is a requirement, okay, and that it has to be approved by the uh, Town of Brookfield Highway Superintendent who is already designated in our bylaws as the permitting authority. And probably <clears throat> as we back to definitions and whatnot, this is not something we invented. The, this right. reflects Mass General Law. Right. This is this is just a right because the authority it's it's under Chapter 10, Section 16 of our bylaws and also Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53, G G one half. So, um, or G one and two. I I apologize. So it it states uh, the range of the. Um, security for single curb cuts, which is fifteen hundred to twenty-five hundred dollars, depending on the complexity and the location and the risk to having adverse effect on the roadway. Um, it talks about um, if there was some sort of default that the funds are used for the for the uh, to redress the any issues that are caused by an inappropriate curb cut. Uh, it talks about the application process very specifically. It talks about what type of plan needs to be included with the curb cut application. Uh, and it talks about the non-refundability of the application fee. Um, it also talks a little bit about what uh, proof of compliance with any other uh, laws. So if there needs to be either the CONCOM or Planning Board or Zoning Board of Appeals approval, that that has to be provided at the time of the permit request. Uh, release of the deposit is once that the work has been completed, uh, the individual notifies the highway superintendent and schedules time for inspection. Um, so long as it, uh, so long as it meets uh, the minimum standards of the work, then they, then the superintendent notifies the applicant and the town treasurer for people to get their money back. Okay, construction guidelines. It talks about the final. Uh, discretion with regards to the application is with the highway superintendent uh, and that the uh, and then it provides general guidelines of how that curb cut and how that driveway needs to be that it should um, minimize traffic conflict for both pedestrians and vehicles uh, that it meets all of our zoning bylaws that it has appropriate grade um, and that when it gets to the street it's at a, an appropriate level to not impact the uh, continuity of the shoulder. Um, it talks about how surface water runoff uh, should be planned for. Um, it talks about the minimum amount of paving that, that has to be done about 10 feet from the edge of the street surface. Uh, and then if a culvert pipe is required by the superintendent, it needs to be installed. Uh, and that the highway superintendent may give other conditions if so long as it's consistent with the overall theme of these requirements. And then it provides an actual procedure for when somebody is in default uh, and how that default is defined. 
Um, it includes that if the uh, uh, that the work has to be done within two years of the date of issuance. Um, it can be uh, considered in, in default if uh, both the applicant and the highway superintendent agree that they're just not there, and then 60 days written notice from the highway superintendent if the inspection under paragraph uh, 7 doesn't meet with the paragraph 8 requirements. Why do we have a change in this? Why are we making a change on this now? I'm not sure I'm alone. Yeah, we're, we're aligning ourselves with, with the, the law as it currently stands. I don't you think two years is long enough. I think it's more than long yeah. enough. From so the time that you request a permit? And there's different holdups in buildings and different things that go on. You know. So then you reapply for another permit. It'll cost you $25 every two years to keep your permit open. I don't think that's an unreasonable you have burden. To no. then you have request another bond? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Well, well, if you close out your permit, so it says there that you can actually close out your permit if you and if you contact. Extension. Well, it's not really an extension, so you would close out that permit and then you would reapply. You get your bond back and then you can reapply. Okay. And it all falls under Mass General. Yeah. Okay. That's that's yeah. That's good. And we're gonna have somebody yeah. signing their name at the bottom of it yeah. before the work even begins. Yep. And how fast is the uh, deposit gets returned? That's not defined in there? It's not? No. I think it should be. It should be, should, should be defined how soon you can get your deposit back if it's, everything's in order. Well, we have two things that are think, Well, let me just double check because I, mean, I, I saw something that said 60 days, but I don't know if that's the, Wait a minute. I don't know if that's the answer to that question or not. And I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't want to say it's not there. I think it's on the third page. I think it's on the there. third page. Okay, something about. Oh, it says 60 days following written notice. It says um, here, um, default of the highway to Superintendent may declare an application in default and apply application security funds to complete work authorized by the permit issued to that ap applicant under the regulations in the following instances. And uh, section C says 60 days following written notice from the highway department that work inspected pursuant to paragraph 7 herein is unacceptable or incomplete where the applicant has failed to adequately adequately address the concerns of the highway superintendent by either correcting or finishing the work or arranging for the work to be corrected or finished by that date to the highway superintendent. doesn't say anything about, about returning. <laughs> but no. We talked earlier this evening that right. we, have a, we have a second separate document yeah. that's over, overshadowed. That's what that 60 days is. It says 60 days. Oh, so. that's correct. It's right here, isn't it? Yeah. So it needs to be in one place or the oh, other. Yeah. It doesn't need to be in both. I'm sorry. It's in the bylaw. It says it'll be returned within 90 days. So we are going to, did we talk about doing that one too? We had yes. talked about whether we really needed it, and I think we did say to go ahead and put it well, on there. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, and I did, I asked Mr. Cook too, because mm. I said, you know, if you, there's no need for it if they adopt this, yeah. and he's insisted he wanted to submit it again. He said they it didn't address it. Mm. Right, and, so and actually, and that's a good point, so. And there have been here in agreement. Right, so and, and this does align with the fees that's in there, because I think it exactly. said 1500 or 2500 correct? Fifteen to 2500 Yep, right. okay. Okay. What happens to the money that uh, don't get reclaimed? What has happened to all that money that's in an escrow account of some sort where all these monies have not been distributed back to the people that pay deposits on driveway cuts? So someone does someone doesn't come back and get the deposit, which has happened, happened many times, which is hard to believe, but it has happened. What are we doing with those monies? They're probably still just in that setting in that account. Yeah. No mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure that that's where they yeah. are. Does it have to be used to finish the driveway? Are you saying uh, if they finish it? Oh, they if they finish, finish it, it and, they, and then they don't come in and uh, say that they want the money back, well, it just stays in that account. I know it's a separate account. It's like an escrow account. Right. And they just nobody, get... Nobody will notify them saying, hey, you forgot to get your deposit back? No, I... I mean, I wouldn't forget 15 but I know there's a big pile of money in there. Mm. I'm just wondering... <clears throat> 
One point of order yeah. about this is that the regulation says 1500 or 2500. This says 1000 or 2500. Can we just align this with what the yes. document says? Yeah. And that's that what we agreed be. to. Yeah. Karen, that should be. So we'll change it. I thought we have 15. to change it, I guess. Well, when you vote to, to place them on. The formal place. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now our next one is to review articles for special town meeting. Okay. Can I start by adding one that wasn't submitted? And I apologize, Karen. I meant to get with you on this, and, and it's my bad for not communicating it. Um, one thing that came to my attention when negotiating the police contract was that our chief, the gap between our chief's salary and what the base salary is for the sergeant is actually less than, like, I think it's only like a 6% difference. Um, typically, there's between a 12 and a 15% difference between the sergeant and what, um, and frequently it's more than that, but it's what's considered a, an industry standard is mm -hmm. a minimum of 12 to 15 percent difference between what the sergeant salary is and what the chief salary is. Now he's on a separate contract that's negotiated. Yes. Yeah. But what I think would be an appropriate thing is to take it to the town meeting mm -hmm. and ask for an additional nine thousand dollars for the chief for this year's salary. And if it gets approved at town meeting, then reopen his contract negotiations and go ahead and, and adjust his base salary to so that we're paying him in a way that is aligned with what's considered usual and customary vis-a-vis -vis the, mm -hmm. the folks that he's supervising. Um, could we add that even though I didn't fill out a form as a special town meeting yeah. or an article? Just to, yeah, I don't and, have the, and the way we that. would phrase it is just to just change the funding level of that particular line of the budget, um, and then. If, I can write up a little flavor about it. All right, so what is it that you want to just send me an email? Or I will send you an email. Yeah. Chief okay. Yeah. okay. That's important. Yep. That'll be number five. That'll okay, be great. five. Thank you. Okay. Our next one here is um, from the highway department to see if the town will vote to transfer or borrow a sum of money for an additional tree removal or take any action, and the sum is $10,000. We definitely need to Yes, have we this. do. They, down here they said there are a large number of trees which are hazardous and needed to be removed. And it said this money will allow us to hire a tree removal company, company for additional days, and they, have a, they had a list included on, on here. So the other <clears throat> one, we need to add this. So that's yes. the same. Oh yeah, that's quite a few. It's 237 trees plus 10 percent. And we're using, we're still doing about the 90 to 100 yeah. a year. Yeah. So the other thing that I learned the other day is that um, they've now identified the loss of the uh, white oaks to uh, the caterpillars and the, uh, mm -hmm. the drought. And so there is, or there may be some monies that we can go after uh, to supplement okay. uh, our town budget. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's good news. Yep, so it's going to happen. It's just a matter of watching for when the money can come. Okay, so we should make Kathy aware then. Uh, it's really Sunday. Oh, is it Sunday? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay I'd like, um, I uh, like a motion to approve. Yeah, motion to approve. Second. Six. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is number six. Yeah. I've been putting in here too. Okay, and this is another one also from uh, highway to see if the town will vote to purchase a uh, transfer or borrow some money to purchase uh, safety equipment for the highway department for twenty seven hundred dollars motion to approve second all in favor aye, aye. number seven this is number seven okay now this is another this is another one from the highway it's to uh See if the town will vote to transfer or borrow a sum of money to purchase a generator for the highway garage in the amount of 39000 And we had here. And, and that was? The yeah, the, in the C, yeah, I saw that. The CIP, they um, agreed with agree that. They did. Motion to add. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number eight. This is eight. 
And this is another one from the highway. The city of the town will vote to transfer some of money from available funds to the fleet repair replacement account. And the amount would be $11,676.78. And it says that this money was obtained through due diligence of the highway department as follows. $2,750 from the sale of the 1980 map truck. Uh, $4,900 from the sale of the 1970 Ford, uh, $326.78 from the sale of scrap metal, and $3,700 from the sale of the 77 map. Motion to add. I'll second. Yeah, I'll, oh, I'll okay. second for discussion. Okay. Um, and actually, they concurred to go ahead and add this, but what they specified during the meeting, and I think it's actually a good discussion to have. Yeah is that back, I think it was like six years ago now, mm -hmm. when we established the fleet repair and replacement account, the definition of it kind of got away from the town. Yes. Okay, in that uh, people, we started transferring monies for new vehicles into this account, mm -hmm. and then, you know, different interpretations of what goes in and how yep. had, had come around. And what they asked was that if we feel we want some amount of money regularly put into it in order to have kind of a buffer mm -hmm. so that we're not over allocating to the department's funds for unexpected maintenance like what's going on with the cruiser right okay. okay that we put an article first on the town meeting warrant that is you know a sum of money probably we determine you know after we have a discussion with advisory and cipc somewhere between maybe fifteen twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars that goes in there to handle you know, emergency extingencies and like small equipment, secondary market purchase. Okay. But leave this on there so that if people get like angry about well, why are we doing this? We don't have it programmed exactly why we have this money that we leave the, the highway one on there also to say, look, we're just trying to ensure the funds are available that we did our due diligence with on the stuff that we turned yeah. in. So, and, and then very comfortable with the concept of passing this one over so long as in the more programmatic mm -hmm. this is how we're doing the financial town planning that if that one passes great and then we just pass over the the one from the highway um, and make it clear that there's like kind of a vision and a plan for how we're managing that account and what the intent is for it um, so I, I would I would concur with them you know from a standpoint of, I don't have a problem with this going on, but I'd like whatever, I think we'd be up to seven. Is What number are we up to? This is not going to be number nine. nine. Okay, so actually number nine would be a generic fleet repair replacement account one, and then this would be number ten. Okay. With the so, understanding well, that we would pass over well, this if the generic if you one read passes. What they brought in the book, yeah. they said that the article should request fifteen to $20,000, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. And, and that that should come up. from either like free cash or from raising appropriate or some other fund yes. source other than doing a transfer from the general fund of these monies that have come back this year. Okay, well, we can fine tune that anyway, but we'll put it Yeah, in. we'll fine yeah. tune But we would need two because one of them would be right. so from nine, some nine other source. Yeah. We're adding yeah. to fund the fleet, and the 10 would be the, uh, the highway 11,000. Yeah. Six. Okay. okay. So that's going to be number, oh, number 10. This and one then, then this, one. then the other one. Number one, 9 is going to be the fleet. The generic one. Yeah. Generic one, yeah. So this is 9. And then, and then ten is the high, the uh, highway one. The eleven thousand. Right. Oh, so the one with the eleven thousand is ten. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. The next one is to increase the zone board of uh, the CEO's annual salary from seven thousand three nine two to eleven thousand. Uh, salary was $9,777 until 2016 when Mr. Comtois recommended to a reduction due to the changing in personnel. This, this I can't, what's that? This office has oh, this increased office workload. this office has increased workload to 20 hours per week. 20 plus hours. Yeah, yeah. he did go, um, Mr. Tomo went to the personnel uh, committee meeting and they agreed. They oh, they approved agreed. it, yes. Oh, sure. 
So, motion to add. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So this would be 11. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer a borrow of some of money to purchase a fire vehicle or take any action relative there too. Yeah, and the CIPC does recommend placement. Uh, my question is, I know that they talked about, I was surprised when I saw that they had approved it because I thought they wanted to wait till uh, next fiscal year. And that's why the, so if you note, they very specifically talked about the timeline and, and what they're stating mm -hmm. is that they support it provided that it wasn't purchased prior to February. Mm -hmm. um, because then what that will allow for is that um, the first interest payment would be due in 2020 fiscal. Um, and also, uh, in talking with Monica, yep. um, we would have the opportunity actually to roll this into the same bond issue or the same borrowing that we do for the police station. So what that would allow us to do is not have the funding fees because uh, Clark Rob got back to her mm -hmm. and we wouldn't wind up um, doing any type of a funding fee in order to do this, this bond individually. Um, so it puts us in a, in a stronger position to go ahead and do it at much lower cost if we go ahead and approve it now so we can time it and cycle it with the police station. Um, so from that perspective, we wouldn't actually pay it until fiscal 20. So it, in essence, by approving it now, it puts us in a position that aligns with the original capital because plan. Because doesn't, doesn't, whenever this comes up, Every, isn't it every year, like with the police station that we have Correct. to? So this would go and be. It would go. It would it'd be a one-year rotating. It would be one on year. the same. Yeah. It would be on the same note, basically. Okay. So. Okay. And this requires say um, two-thirds vote. It would require two-thirds vote. And I see that the cost too has gone up from two hundred thousand, and um, they don't suggest that the figure go over two eighty. Correct. It's out there. Okay, yes. so so how old the chief is here? So um, this is the usual. You want to come up, Peter? I I'm not sure what that is. Let's see. No. <laughs> have you got one? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Do you have you been looking? Have you found? I haven't found, but. Um, we are monitoring the market and, and used apparatus, and that's what led to um, just discussion on increase over it is to get something with a time frame that it can still last for us. I mean, we shouldn't be using much um, in frontline service over 20, 25 years. So now we're able to really expand on that and look at it. And this also, the cost during the CIBC meeting included um, if we need. If we choose to go and look at this vehicle, obviously we're not going to drive to Eugene, Oregon to look at one. We'll try to stay obviously closer. And if there's any equipment that is specific, that is needed for that truck, uh, that can't be brought over from the 88. So there's some things on that. But um, I think 280 runs about half of what a brand new truck was. So depending mm -hmm. on what 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 thought process you have, the old idiom of well, as soon as you drive it off a lot, it loses so much then we're in a better position to get a truck that we're not immediately going to have to start looking. You know, the, uh, once this truck comes in, the light at the end of the tunnel is a lot less than. We don't need to immediately start thinking about it. So, right. so. Both, both Peter and I have done some uh, independent market research mm -hmm. and, and both got numbers that ranged anywhere from if we're really lucky, it's still possible we could stay under 200 if we happen to find the right truck. But the, the way that the market is to try to get something that's, that's less than 12 years old, we really, I mean, bare minimum is probably going to be 240. To put it at 280 gives us just a little bit of room to, if we find a six-year-old truck at like, because every once in a while you'll see like a six-year-old a six truck at like 265. Right, so that's a truck that we could get 19 mm -hmm. years out of if we go with about a 25 yeah. year, you yeah. know, service. We start using that. So, yeah. so that's a price range where it gives us some. We can either get like a a, a, a higher quality truck that's a little bit older, or one that's mm -hmm. like a brand that's not kind of as fancy a brand but newer, and it gets us into a sweet spot in the market where we have a good chance of getting a much younger truck. 
Um, and I think long term, that's a better choice for the for the town. So. I will vote to put, I'd uh, like a motion to vote to put this on the wall. Yes. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is number 12. Number 12, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I'll send you the PowerPoint presentation that um, we took a bunch of his educational notes and, and like the age of equipment and I'll provide it to Karen as well um, so that you all have it and if we want to have copies of it at town meeting we could probably provide it to people so they understood what we have yeah. in the fleet and what we're replacing and that sort of thing. Good. And the next one is to um, allow a prior year payroll payment to the Conservation Committee clerk of $165. Yep, she didn't submit her payroll oh. until FY19 yeah. or FY18, yeah. so she couldn't get paid. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. um, um, I'll uh, it. Okay. Okay. I'm sure this is going to probably need two thirds vote. Yes. Okay. Something like yeah. that. And this is one um, from the town clerk. Create a new job description known as transfer station manager or take any other action there, too. Now, Linda, again, that was the one that I did talk about, and I, I asked him to get together a job description and that the job description has to be approved yeah. at town meeting. But, but the this, is, this is how he gave it to me, and he's, he's going to get the job description later, and he didn't think it had to be approved at yeah. town meeting. It has to, and it has to be also because we have to add it to the classification of the personnel. Right, I know it has to be, he's going to submit it to the personnel board, but he just uh, questioned why it had to be uh, approved at time. It has to because because it tri it's, yeah. it's going to be station management. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is get a job description. We'll yep. put it, if you want to vote on it, then we'll get a job description. Make sure he gets it to us. Before. Yeah, the personnel. Oh, it's funny. He's the same person that said to hire an evening clerk. We would need to take it in front of town meeting, and he's asking us why we're doing. Yeah. Asking for the same yeah, thing. Yeah, this has to go. Okay. Then, Thanks for clarifying. We have to put a rate rate of uh, salary on this too. I asked him that. He said they didn't have one yet. We'll try to get some. Uh, so, so what's the yeah, justification? What's the justification behind yeah. this? Uh, I don't know. He just told me that they decided they needed one. Well, they decided they needed a transfer station manager. This is for the board health. I well, say know. for an example, I know other times that they voted um, to have uh, different mem members of the board be. Yeah, uh, I, I'd like. I, I mean. T for temporary. Let's see yeah, uh, actually, yeah. can you just invite Mike to our next meeting yeah. to talk about it? Yeah, I'll, you know, 13 for the T. And I'm 14, but 13 oh, this is conservation clerk. Oh, okay, this 14. is 14. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah, and we have my... And, or you can just send you guys individual emails if you want to start it off like that. That's fine. Yeah. Let's do that. But I mean, but still, we have to go over it and put it a step in grade on this. You know exactly. On this position. Okay, now what is this one? East for Brookfield Bridge. Yes, this is a placeholder. If you read the email that's with this, this is, if you're familiar with it, Beth, I know. Uh, this is what they suggest. Yep. They, uh, in order to, uh, they want the, the town to acquire the land parcels, or the rights in land parcels for the right of way. So it looks like it's all ours and then state land. So how are we supposed to acquire the state land? Do they have any recommendations? Well, Mass DOT, like I said, this is what they gave us. And if you read the email, she said that she does plan to send along some more information, but she said a full plan set should be in soon, but she'll send us. Yep. So she asked, specifically said placeholder, so I'm sure yeah. she's giving us more info. A absolutely. So, um, so it's basically our stuff in the States? Yes, yeah, so our stuff in the States. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's the good news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, that's the really good news, right? So, um, so we'll put this one on. Who has the best relationship with Fish and Wire Wildlife? Um, or is that a funny question to ask? Where I have no relationship, do I have the best relationship with them? So, so where where we are is that uh, 
we have things that are owned by wildlife that should be owned by DCR, and we have things owned by DCR that should be owned by wildlife. And there needs to be, mm -hmm. as we do our open space plan activity later this year and into early next year, that needs to be on the agenda of things that we need to work on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let Karen for now be, but if, if you need something, yeah. Karen, let me know. Yeah. At least reach out to him and. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put this on also. Yes. It's 15. It's going to be number 15. That's 15. going to be the last one, too. Okay, that's the last one. We thought we didn't need to do. We got an awful lot of stuff on it already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And this, and this is the. Okay. Oh, that's it. Do you want these also, Karen, or do you want to just leave it here? I have one in the U.S. still. I'm sure that that's it. Okay. Give those to us. All right. Our next, so that's all that we want to put on, and I don't know if it's a possibility if we come across something else, we can reopen it before then. So as of now, the town special is closed. All right. And now, anything under other items? Oh, under other. I have two yeah. quick things. If okay. Because okay. I don't see anything. Um, one is that I just forwarded it to Karen. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I got it last night and I forgot to forward it. I got some correspondence from, from Rudy Heller. Um, he expressed a concern that we haven't currently been making a lot of movement towards getting uh, 40B compliant and that it could put us at risk with developers to, you know, inflict some mm -hmm. non-desirable type of, of developments on us in order to get um, uh, affordable housing in town. Uh, and he, he offered himself as at least a, a founding member of uh, and, and asked that we try to form a committee related to coming up with at least a plan around 40B housing, um, specifically perhaps take advantage of some of the property either where we've recently uh, demolished some of the derelict houses um, and some of those were in tax title, I believe, so the mm -hmm. property may be coming back to us, is that uh, even if they're non-compliant lots, so long as they were rebuilt within two years, then we have the potential to um, go ahead and, and place potentially some, some you know, deeded low, lower income housing, and we might be able to work something out with even 10 Tasqua to make it like their class project to build a small home on, on like whether it's one of those properties or whether it's a property that's already gone through tax title. And if we show even the smallest movement in activity towards obtaining the state goal, then it puts us in a much stronger position to um, set a firm line with developers about what we will and won't allow with, with certain types of developments. But something too like this, I mean, we do have a housing authority here in town, so. We do, but it, it, it hasn't hardly met though, and it hasn't been horribly active. And I, I think it's, this is more of like a steering committee or like. Because they're usually basically the ones that go after, you know, that go after the monies and the grants. Okay. for the housing. So maybe we should have this committee in junction with them. Have Rudy go stir it up a little bit. Yeah. Have so, Rudy go find out, have him call a meeting. I don't even know who's on the committee anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain. That'd, that'd be a good, good thing to yeah, do. Yeah, I think they should, you know, he should go and find out and go to a meeting and call one. Okay. Or call one. Yeah. That's what I think they should do. Do you, yeah. uh, do you have on record who's currently on our housing oh, no, authority? I want to say Mike Siri. Is Mike still on? I think Jennifer Grabowski was in the past. But she's know. not anymore. I, I don't think it's vacant. I don't even know that it's still active anymore. Well, so so the thing of it is, is that it's it's there. Okay. Um, I don't think they. I don't think the state has has allocated their person to it. Um, it may be that if there's a vacancy, we're actually obligated to appoint somebody, and maybe the answer is we say, hey, Rudy, you said that you were interested in pushing this. Would you accept yeah. an appointment to the housing authority, mm -hmm. and will you start pushing them to reconvene, and then we can work with that entity mm -hmm. to come up with this this yep. um, affordable housing yeah. plan? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it doesn't, don't we work with the Oxford Housing no, I thought North Brookfield took. I, I no, so, so Mike had been talking about trying to consolidate it, but because we have, he, he's been very inactive in actually ad addressing that. So it, it may be time to get some fresh blood okay. involved. I don't know if I I was under the understanding Oxford did it for a while, but I thought North Brookfield took it over. 
because they have a new director up there because we don't have we didn't have a director we, we talked about or I had, I had heard word that we we Brookfield's housing authority not we like me was, yeah. was was considering consolidating with North Brookfield I don't think any official activity yeah. ever occurred but I know when I was on it I've been off for a couple of years two or three years now and I know that uh, Oxford had taken it over mm. So we just need to find out. Oh, so, sure. So if Rudy wants to yeah. pull the thing together. I think Rudy should try to pull it together. Yeah, and and, and if there's a vacancy, then maybe if we're the appointing authority when, yeah. when it's when it's mm -hmm. not filled by election, perhaps that's yeah. what we do is we appoint him to it and then um, ask him to kind of be our advocate to get something moving. And, from. and I know for years also on it was, uh, there's a state appointee also, mm -hmm. a, somebody, you know, that we'd be communicating and nobody's ever come up. We haven't had anybody to do that right. in years. We may have to agitate to get the state to appoint their representative. Yeah. So. No, no, no. It's an appointee on the housing authority. No, I understand yeah. that. But we might have to agitate with the state to yeah. get them to appoint mm -hmm. their person. We need to do it. Yeah, we do. We need to do something. So I know there's so many people, I, I, I feel bad, so many people here in Brookfield, they've lived here all their lives, they're elderly, and it's a shame we don't have housing and they, they move out, they move in one of the yeah, other communities. So. No, cho no choices. Yeah. Yeah. We lost so. another one in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it's too bad. And then uh, I was wondering if we wanted to at least send an inquiry to the Recreation Committee formally or if you want me to informally reach out to them. I didn't want to do it without talking to y'all for it first about um, getting a more comprehensive plan around the maintenance at South Pond, the beach. I know that they did that great cleanup day. I think they did yeah. phenomenal work. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things, I, and I think he sent a note to all to the to Karen. But I I got a copy of the now expired mm -hmm. lease between us and Fish and Wildlife mm -hmm. regarding the property, um, and I don't know what y'all feel about how to approach that if if you think we need to get back into negotiations with Fish and Wildlife to get at least an updated lease and then also work with Rec Committee to see um, if they want to add some members specific to the management of the beach and, mm. and to meet the lease requirements. They did just recently yeah. ask me for copies of, of the lease and other yeah. paperwork which mm. I did provide a couple of months ago they were working on yeah, I think I'm renegotiating. Oh, because it, yeah, because the rep commission they always took care of the beach and it was nice. Right, and, and Ian's yep. got some yeah, energy Ian, to, yeah. to pull this thing together, so right. that would be at least a good yeah. exchange of emails to yep. start. And do you have his email handy? I've got it. Okay. Um, I can give it to you. I, well, I got his phone. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I would I would grab Ian because that. So if we could expand this just a little bit more, yep. we're going to be working on something related to open space in December, okay. where Ian needs to be a, a vital part of that conversation as well. It, you notice mm -hmm. that I did not have the campground in here. Yeah. Met with the historic commission the other night, mm -hmm. and we agreed to pull the throttle back on any activity related uh, to mass historical as far as grants and whatever. Uh, because what happens is there's some park money, park grant money that may be available, and that's 100% money rather than 50% oh, money. So if we can align ourselves, it's a better That'd idea. Be so um, anyway, long story short, I, I would say if Beth would get a hold of Ian, that would be great, oh, yeah. and, get, and get the ball started. Be because great. once you have that, that's going to plow into the open space activity. Okay. Okay. Yep, sorry for all the drop-ins. I appreciate everyone's yes, patience. Okay. All right, we all set. We'll go into correspondence. Yep. Okay, we have a recycling grant notice from the governor's office. Uh, we were re awarded a grant of $3,850 from the Sustainable Material Recovery Program. And that came from the governor's office. And we have another one here from Charter Communications, but up coming lineup. Effective on October 1st, 2018, NBA League Pass will be added to HD Pay Preview for Seasonal Sport Package. And then effective on October 1st, 2018, Newsmax HD will be launching on the digital Tier 1 Silver level of service. And if you have any questions, you can get in touch with uh, 
annalucy at chata.com. That's about all on the correspondence. So it's uh, 7.50, and I would like, uh, if nothing else is coming up, I'd like a motion to adjourn. You get that. public access? No. Why not? Oh. Oh, you do have it on camera. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. All right. Do you have public access? Yes. I'm going to have it. I've been at meeting at different times here. All right, I've spoken to Sharon quite a few times about the Channel 194. It's been off almost seven weeks. And... Um, I want to know if we're going to get it on or what. I know it's it's a long time, and I was on this committee before, and this is just, you know, seven weeks. I don't know if you're censoring or I don't know what's going on, but it's been off for seven weeks, so I want to know if we can help her committee or do whatever we got to do to get this thing back on or not, or, or is it just going to stay off? Sharon, would you like to respond to that? Dave has called me at least three times about this, and I have told him the truth. And the truth is that we had an outage due to the recent thunderstorms that came through. It affected the settings in our equipment, which is highly technical digital equipment that was purchased two years ago. We are a committee of three people. We found out that our um, maintenance contract for this, our service contract, has expired. We need to meet and negotiate a new service contract with Telview so that we can have somebody come out and show us how to reset it. We have a meeting coming up. It hasn't been posted yet, but it is coming up at which we will make that decision. Contact Telview and get that transaction done. But until that happens, we cannot get back on the air. And I have told Dave this three <coughs> times. And there is no censorship involved. There is no deliberate withholding of the channel. I actually posted this information on the Brookfield Community Facebook page and on the Town of Brookfield Facebook page because I did get some inquiries, and the answers seemed to satisfy the people who responded. That's where things stand now. Thank you, Sharon. So, Sharon, when do you think it's going to be up and running? And, Dave, I've told you this before, and I've told you it depends on... I'm asking on you again. I'm the Chairman. When you think it'll be up and running? This time you move on, Dave. You've asked, she just said that you've called this us. This is our meeting. I know, but I just, no, okay, I'll talk to you after. And that's it. Again. Okay. All right, thanks, Sharon. Okay, next subject. Okay, um, tires on Lake Road. We had a bunch of us, we went down there and we pulled a whole bunch out, quite a few, and we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do the other side of the road this time. So I'm gonna let, let the highway department know when we're gonna do it so they don't sit out there for two, three days like they did before. Um, we're not gonna pick up any trash. We're just gonna pick up inside, inside probably maybe 10 feet, 20 feet in, um, whatever's there. And we're gonna start from one end and, and go down probably maybe to the Oakham um, farm boundary. You mean personally you're doing this? Well, me and a bunch of other people, yeah. We, we did this two weeks ago. Um, two other gentlemen and, and me and a couple other people, we uh, pulled as many as we could out. Um, so we're going to do it again probably another week as soon as I get more time here. Um, we're going to go probably, like I said, a little further than the 10 or 20 feet in. Um, so, and I'll, I'll notify, like I said, the highway, and I'll let the, the, the police, let the, you know, let them notify them as well of what we're doing and when we're doing it, so you'll know about it, okay? We will not be picking up trash, though, only, only any, anything that's big, you know? So, I'm going to notify you on that. Trees on High Street, what are we doing? We this one before? I'm bringing it up again. We get, I saw the highway superintendent marking trees uh, on Allen Road today. I stopped and spoke to him, and he told me if it had green leaves on it that he wasn't going to cut it. Uh, but the tree he was marking had green leaves on it. It's kind of funny. So the trees on High Street and Draper Street are very hazardous. So um, are you, do you have any money left? 
Well, he was just asking for additional money because he had a whole list of Right, but do you have any money left right now? Or? That would be a question we have to find out from the town council. Okay. All right, well, one of them... I would if we yeah. have money. Well, then, yeah, we'll have to ask Cindy because um, if they're asking for additional money, I don't think they might have... Okay. Well, no, it's just he's, proje he's projected that he, he'll yeah. run out. I don't okay. think he's out yet. So Cindy would be the one... Okay. Uh, I'm just because there's, like I said, there's pedestrians and residents near these trees. So, I mean, I've seen other trees being cut and they're not. This is what, on Draper and High? Does he have yeah. any? He has Draper and High. Okay. I already, okay. remember when you called and asked me to ask him about that? I didn't, I gave you the answer. One was that there wasn't any. No money, one that's was right. That, one was that the tree, the, the other were leaves on it, so nothing was going to be done with that one. And the other one was that there wasn't any money. Uh, and I just drove up Allen Road today and I saw the trees that were marked and while some of them may have had green leaves the the, the amount of lean on some of those trees yeah. I was sitting there going hey are we going to do something about that and I look and there's like a red dot yeah. on it and that like, that's my know? that's my point on just because it got green leaves doesn't mean it, right no I get it okay I, I'm just I'm just these if you go up and look at them yourself you'll see that the shoulder and one on high street is really dangerous right so there's there so are I'm just there are trees that's okay. identified on both uh, on both of those roads yeah. Okay. So on high end right you got them both. Yeah. yeah okay. Both all right. Now just I'm just making sure that's yeah. all. I'm, that's all I'm doing. I don't know that there's this, they're the same ones, but I'm presuming that it's the same ones. So. It is okay. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, now I would like the motion to adjourn. At. Um, I'm, I'm the only one that seven. signs in. You have second two. Seven. Seven. I'm the only one that always seven. signs in. <laughs> Motion to adjourn at 757. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.